Hello everyone, I greet you in the name of God Almighty. My name is Apostle Newton Silas and I'm here with Nancy Grace. And today we'll be reacting to Norman Ali Khan explain why the Quran is from God to Andrew Tati. Whoa, that's gonna be great. I think we're gonna listen to a lot of wisdom in it <laughs> because for you to be able to like explain it, you kind of need the help of God to be able to do that. So guys, if today happens to be the first time of you taking out my channel, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my Facebook and Instagram. And if you have any video you want me to react to, don't forget to drop it at the comment section and I'm going to check it out. So guys, before we get down to the video, I'm a theologian and I make this video not to discredit anyone's religion. This is basically for educational purposes. So guys, let's get down to the video. Alhamdulillah, we are in contract to purchase this 35,000 square foot facility to make it the Dean Center and in it there will be a masjid, inshallah. The last and final messenger sent to mankind, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said that the one who helps build a masjid for Allah, Allah will build for them a house in Jannah. Get the tremendous rewards and donate right now to help purchase this property. May God Almighty Allah reward all of you. Who he was, right? What would you say to him is one proof that he can look at to, to confirm that Islam is, the Quran is not a man-made book and Islam is not a man-made religion. It's indeed from the divine, being an expert in the Quran. Well, um, lots can be said. Um, I'd start off by my own journey to share can you hear a him? couple of things. Can you hear him, Andrew? I can hear, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, nice talking to you. Uh, I think that I what I like to do uh, when I meet with audiences, uh, professors of other faiths, and you know intellectuals, anybody, uh, is that I like to invite them to explore the Quran, um, you know, intellectually, and critically. Uh, that's an invitation that the Quran gives. It's interesting that people perceive religion as something that you have to be indoctrinated into and you have to follow it as the dictates are and you don't have to actually critically ask any questions or think and contemplate and the Quran is kind of unique in the way that it presents its message because it's constantly saying don't you then think don't you contemplate haven't you asked questions this is a book for those who seek to ask uh, to have answers it's not actually asking you to shut your brain off and accept what it's saying it's actually asking you to contemplate its message so it stands really unique in that sense um, my own, you know, since it offered that invitation to me, I didn't come to the Quran first as someone who believes in it, as wanted to figure this thing out and, you know, try to make sense of it. Um, and many of the things that I struggled with in philosophy when I was a student of philosophy, they started getting unraveled as I was getting deeper and deeper in my study of the Quran. It just started kind of untying a lot of those knots. And it's also remarkable that some of the biggest addictions that people suffer from, every one of them is targeted one after the other in the Quran. Right? Some of the things that plague humanity more like gambling, for example, alcohol, for example, intoxication, for example. Like each of these things is targeted and you think it's not just a solving a Muslim problem, it's solving a human problem. It's solving a societal problem. It's solving a global problem by targeting these each each of these specific things. Um, the other thing that I would that you know, that really fascinated me, I ended up writing a book on it, ended up getting taught around the world. Uh, Alhamdulillah, it's even being used um, in one of the Islamic studies courses at Harvard now. Uh, is Divine Speech? It, it's a book I dedicated along with my student to why is this book? Why is this book? Why am I believing that it's divine? What's making me think this? And I wrote it for a non-Muslim audience actually. Uh, it's a little bit academic, but the point of it was there are there are elements to this book. And the way that it's structured, that if you first, if you went to the library or you got on Amazon and bought yourself a translation of the Quran and you started reading it, you think the subject is kind of going all over the place. Right? It's, it's, it's not staying on the same subject. Right? It's saying some profound things, but the organization seems unlike anything I've ever read. Uh, and that was one of the things that baffled me at first. Like, why is it organized in this way? And so I, one of the areas of my study became the organization of the Quran. Why is it organized in this way? Why is God talking in this disarray and what I discovered was something absolutely breathtaking that it's it's got a symmetrical structure that you'll have a chapter for example that's hundreds of verses like Baqarah's 286 verses it's an oral tradition so it wasn't written first it was recited and pronounced and memorized in that way 
amounts to about 50 pages in Arabic, right? But if you study the subject matter, the, 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 the nine subjects that are occurring in this long 50-page discourse are like subject one is directly tied to subject nine and two to eight and three to seven and four to six and five d right center in the middle. Like there's an incredible three-dimensional structure to the way the argument's being presented. Like human beings, we think linear, right? I'm going to make point A, then I'm going to make point B, then I'm going to make point C. That's how I organize my thoughts. And unless you write something down and say, you know what, I'm going to do this and just for fun, I'm going to do A, B, C, and then go C, B, A. Right? Even doing that in, in six sentences is hard for me as I'm sitting here talking to you because my brain isn't wired that way. But this thousand, you know, a millennium and a half old tradition has got multiple surahs and multiple chapters where this kind of a structure is demonstrated over and over again and other kinds of structures are like, this is not possible for a human being to do. Linguistically, it's not possible. I'm a, a student of linguistics. It's just not possible. These kinds of structures, this kind of organization. That, that's one of the things I wrote about in the book. And I started, ended up teaching courses on this stuff. Um, but for just, at a, just to take a step back level, my invitation to anybody is put your preconceived notions aside. Take what you may have heard about Islam, what you may have thought about it from your own faith tradition's point of view. Put all of that aside. And you know, I, I wouldn't even invite somebody to read the Quran to accept Islam. Read the Quran neutrally and get a first, uh, you know, an unbiased impression. And I would think it's really difficult to not walk away truly being moved by what you're, what you're being exposed to, truly being hit by what you're exposed to. Uh, the, the final thing I'll say is there is a huge tragedy in the world today that even most Muslims aren't as aware of the Qur'an as they should be, right? So Muslims don't become a really good representation of the contents of the book, right? So even disconnecting yourself from the Muslim bias, I'm just going to read this for myself with no other influences as much as possible. At the end of the day, human beings can are going to have some bias or the other, but as much as I can consciously be disconnected from bias and give it a shot and, and read it, I think that that would be my invitation to anybody. Andrew, any question, any uh, final question, anything you'd like to ask him while he's here? What happened was, because we got delayed with the program, he, next guest was coming in, so I'm uh, <laughs> with you. But this is amazing. You can look him up actually online and you'll see a ton of his videos. I'm his going to. I'm going to read that book as well because it was really yeah. interesting what you were saying. It was really interesting what you After were saying. After the show, about I'd like to send you a copy as a gift. Yeah. And also, your invitation is exactly the way I would have done it anyway. I would have read it. I'm going to read it. I'm not, I've yet to read the Quran, but it's certainly something I'm going to do. I'm going to read it without a preconceived notion, without a preconceived idea. And I think that's the best way to do things because you're right. There's too much bias in the world. But um, from from what I know, I think we just talked about it for the last hour. From what I know, I have absolute respect for the religion and respect for the faith. And I've been very, very blessed to be on the show. So thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. I cannot leave without giving you a gift. If you're not yet Muslim and you tune in to see what these Muslims are talking about and you like a free copy of the Quran, go ahead and visit thedeanshow.com. We'll take care of the postage and everything and get it delivered to you. And if you still have some questions about Islam, call us at 1-800-662-4752. We'll see you next time. Until then, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. And if you like this episode of The Dean Show, like this video, share this video far and wide, and support us on our Patreon page so we can continue this work. Thank you for tuning in. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. Mm, that's a very that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, amen, amen, amen. It's just a very interesting show because it kind of gives people that opportunity and the platform for you to come express yourself, talk about your religion. I think this day show is a kind of interesting one. I think I need to check it out, you understand, even their YouTube and then see some of the things they have been doing. But nevertheless, um, the young man tried to, un uh, to interpret uh, the Quran or to explain the Quran why it is from um, God and it was just a very interesting one when he was saying that if you want to read the Quran you should just kind of read it out of notion like don't keep sentiment aside and if you want to read it don't read it even because like you want to accept Islam just read it you understand here like as human try to understand what the Quran is all about that's when he was like if you read the Quran the Quran will not say 
do this this way do this this way but you actually don't you think it means that it makes you to use your logic to be able to try to understand or to see if what god is saying is really true or not and it's very very interesting one all right it's very um interesting but then when the video um started i do not know why they decide to show a temple a church as a place they want to buy they're asking people to donate so that they can build a masjid or a mox the masjid actually means um, a mox but as to me i feel like they should have just shown a land and says that oh we're trying to do this we want to do this and we want to build a mox we want to build a place that people will go and worship and all that but you showing a church and then it has a place that you want to buy in order for you to well to me i feel that it was not that proper because as if you want to kind of start an argument that's why you decide to but then when that is the kind of perception they give okay. me but then when i went on to watch the video then it gives me another different perspective like i begin to see things in a sense differently but just like the way they started the video they kind of make me feel like i was like are they gonna argue why should they show things like that but then all the same maybe that's how they decide and they wanted to but it, nevertheless, the Quran is actually the word of God and it was revealed to his um, messenger, which is Prophet um, Muhammad. And then this is some of the things that when we look at um, most societies today, you got to realize that the structure of most of the societies or those nations, we are actually built with the help of the Quran. And then there are so many things that we didn't know before about god or about history some things that has happened before that we did not know but god was able to reveal them to prophet muhammad and then right now we all know about it which the quran i used to say in our video that the quran is not actually for the muslim alone but this is actually a blessing to humanity so guys this is the end of our video if you like our reaction you should like share and subscribe and if you have any video you want us to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and i'm gonna check it out so guys remain blessed yes.